Russ Taylor with Secure CPG, Brad from Accountfully. Brad, how are you today? Doing well. Awesome. I want to talk about the topic of cybersecurity coverage and awareness for CPG brands. Um, Brad, from an accounting standpoint and a financial standpoint, um, tell me what should brands be aware of and concerned about um, with their cybersecurity and really sales and using a website? Yeah, I mean, this goes in line basically with, you know, just normal day-to-day -day life of getting your email hacked, of getting your bank accounts and routing numbers hacked, right? Your social security number hacked just from, a, a, again, an individual perspective. Moving forward in, in, in the world of 2024, as we're heading into 2025 soon, um, cyber and cybersecurity should be of, of heightened awareness of everybody, especially a small business owner, i.e. CPG brand. Um, cash is king. Cash is basically how you run your business, how you pay for them and try to pay your employees. Well, what if somebody hacks you and, and, and you end up trying to pay a vendor who's a fictitious vet vendor and you pay them and wear them $100,000 for inventory and it goes somewhere that you literally can't claw back and it's somebody that's living in a foreign country that, 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 that hacked you, right? So that's the biggest risk there of that is really allowing somebody to access your banks or credit cards to, to spend money, but even more so, high dollar amount bills and expenses you need to pay, you need to ensure that you're paying the right person, right? So, so the biggest kind of thing that we see on the accounting side is just fraudulent emails of people emailing Brad at, at Accountfully. Hey, Brad, uh, here's my invoice. I got a new bank account. Can you update the bank account file and then send me an ACH or a wire, right? So that's the biggest thing there from ensuring that you have proper controls and mechanisms in place to not manually enter bank account information that comes through an email, make sure that it's actually valid and legit. So that's the risk there. So if I guess, you know, Russ, back to you on, on, on the insurance side. So for a, a small business owner, a CPG brand, anybody in that, 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 that ilk, what type of insurance should they look for or how should they mitigate that risk? Yeah, Brad, you hit the nail on the head. The, the falsified PO, falsified invoice, um, or just intercepting an email and trying to, um, trick someone into sending a payment somewhere where it's not supposed to go. Most common thing that we see with small businesses. Um, cyber security, cyber coverage, insurance is easily obtained these days. Um, and you can get a pretty robust limit at a very reasonable cost. And a lot of times what we want to protect against, there's, there's a whole litany of things that the, the policy can protect, but it's, you know, it's the payments going to the wrong person. It's being locked out of your ability to access your data or your client's information. Uh, and it's protecting against that. It's protecting against your lost, your lost inventory, your lost ability to operate the business um, or, uh, you know, adversely affecting someone in the industry that is a client of yours. Um, the, the biggest, most prime example that I, most people have ever heard of is um, the target credit card breach that happened a handful of years ago, that actually happened through an HVAC mechanical contractor. They backdoored in um, and it ended up affecting Target. And that HVAC mechanical contractor um, had cyber coverage that protected them, e even though the breach was their fault. So um, you probably hear this all the time when you talk to your clients, Brad. We hear, we certainly hear it a lot is, oh, we don't think we have a, a cyber risk or a cyber exposure. And that's just you know, the, the cliche in the insurance industry is if you have an email address, you have a cyber exposure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I would have said that two, three years ago, but after just the volume that exists in this day and age of, of just these emails and the different situations we've seen, I mean, um, you get an email from a vendor or a customer or whatever they are, it looks exactly legit. It may be like in the email and maybe the same exact wording, but behind it, it actually is a different email address. And, and you just got to be very conscious of that, um, you know, from, a, again, a, a cash flow outlay standpoint. But um, I mean, one of our banking partners here, he mentions that um, some of the things that they teach their 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 uh, team members uh, is that to not click like, like on unsubscribe on some of these emails, because literally some people pay, paste them in, you press unsubscribe. And then all of a sudden they get in your computer, hack your vendors, your contacts, your emails, and move on from there in your banking. So um, from my perspective, again, cash is king. You need that to, to run your business and everything. So double checking and ensuring you have proper um, uh, controls in place plus insurance really helps out in that manner. And from my perspective as a business owner, 
we have cyber insurance and it's not that crazy of, of a of a premium annual premium for what it can cost and cover from a dollar standpoint.